Hey, this is Jim Bergman with MeasureQuick. Uh, made some really significant changes over the last few months to the MeasureQuick application. We've been getting a handful of questions and I thought I'd just walk everybody through the application, uh, some of the changes we've made and how we intend to use it. So I'm gonna take a couple minutes and just walk you through sort of step-by-step -step a project and uh, show you what we've got here. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip, um, flip away from the camera here and go into MeasureQuick. I'm just gonna go to the home screen for just a minute. And if you started looking at, at this, uh, what I've got here is I've just got a system hooked up and running. So it's, um, I'm tied into an I-manifold right now. And um, if, uh, if you go into the, uh, I'll just start with a couple things, I guess, with settings. Up in the upper right-hand corner, there's a gear there. That is our settings menu. And uh, if you go into the settings, you're going to see right now I've got the touch indicators on. And that's just so you can see the blue dot where I'm touching on here. And I've uh, shown the, the screen awake so it doesn't go off when working. And then we notice, if you notice here, we move the demo data, if you want to use any of the demo data, into the uh, settings menu. So it's just a quick, easy place to get it. And uh, hey, for our friends in Canada, in Canada we'll have uh, new units of measure coming soon here. But for right now, we're just supporting uh, typical U.S. units of measurement. So I'm going to go ahead and close that menu up. The second thing I want to show you is the, the little guy over here is, the, uh, is, is your login. So... Um, you can see I'm logged in as Jim as MeasureQuick.com. The first time you, you get this up, you're going to get our end user license agreement or EULA that you're going to have to go through and just accept, and that'll allow you to, to use MeasureQuick. I can check my permissions here, and you can see I have standard permissions. If I'm in a project, I might have uh, other permissions here. And a couple other things I want you to notice that um, uh, down at the bottom here, we have all of our different supported tools. Uh, depending on the on the permissions you have, you may see some other tools in there. Uh, we do have some other tools that we're supporting for like Title 24 in California. But if you tap on any one of these, and I'll show you I manifold specifically, um, it'll tell you uh, about the uh, free beta, how long that, that trial is, um, and I'll also in this case tell you how you need to configure your mapping for your for your I manifold or your I connect. Uh, we don't currently support um, the pairing of the probes and the mapping in. Measure quick, we'll do that eventually here. But uh, it was easy enough just to go and configure that stuff in iManifold because you, you only have to do it once. Once you have it configured, you really can do everything for Measure Quick at that point. You don't need to go into the iManifold app again. Um, and the only time you might have to is you, if you bump a probe out of your network uh, by pressing and holding a wireless button. But otherwise, uh, you can go right into Measure Quick and just start working uh, like I did here. Um, so a little bit of information about all the products are supported. Uh, definitely more products coming soon. Stand by for that. I think there's going to be some exciting things coming. So uh, I don't want to I don't want don't want to spill the beans yet on that one. So you can see I've got this all set up here now. I, I just literally opened up MeasureQuick, so I haven't configured anything yet. But what I want to show you is this whole project. Everything we've done is now uh, based on a project. Now you could obviously come in and and just start working. You know, if I wanted to go in and change my uh, metering device to a capillary tube. This is a little window air conditioner running in the office here and, and change my you know refrigerant or whatever I can do any of that or set up my system information. I can do any of that. But uh, the real intent of what we've done here is to set up a project and complete a process. So I'm going to go on the bottom there. You'll see across the bottom we have a couple of different navigation bars. We have a, a lower one which is um, uh, the, what we call the project bar and then the, the middle one is just uh, actions like save data um, or eventually there'll be geotagging there if you want to geotag or benchmarking the system will actually pop up a little later here. But, um, and then we have the, the main navigation structure with the information about the system, your outdoor measurements on the sunshine, your indoor, indoor measurements um, on the, uh, that are made inside the house. Anytime you see two dots like that, those two dots indicate there's two menus. So if you tap it again, it'll go to the second menu, our performance, and then our, our outdoor readings. So let's go in, uh, let's get a, just use this way that, uh, that we have an engineer here. I'm gonna hit project, and I'm gonna just do a standard system test. So I'm gonna click on system test. It's gonna say, are you, you wanna create a new project? I'll hit continue, and then I'm in. So the project names are automatically um, named for you. So in this case, system test, it's set up with the, uh, with the date, the timestamp, all, all that's done so you don't have to enter anything in there. Now you could change the project name if you wanted to, to like Smith Residence or whatever, but by default, we have it set up that way, so they're easy to search, uh, you know, if you want to search them in the future. Project notes, that's red, and what that means is, now, this could be one of two things. The office will be able to type notes in here for you. Uh, this whole framework, what we have set up here is for the introduction of cloud, which is coming next. Um, and, and this would allow the office to pre-populate a lot of this stuff. 
So either this can be notes put in by the technician or notes put in by the office. So uh, somebody at the office could write, you know, don't let the cat out here. And that box would be uh, red X until you went in and viewed the notes and then it'll go to a green check mark. So, uh, and uh, if you, if there's no notes in there and you want to enter notes and you come back out, it'll also go to a green check mark. Now job site is so we can actually geotag the location. So this is actually, um, on my site location where I'm at. So I'm at uh, the 5592 Broadview Road, but I could drag and fine tune that if I wanna fine tune that, um, or I can hit action and I can just say, you know, move pin to current location, and that's gonna mark my current location. By default, again, it's gonna name, auto name the site, so it's set up site four, and I can hit customer information, and I'll just go ahead and type in uh, my name. And, um, oops. And then I'm going to put in the email address, jim at measurequick.com. I'll put in the phone number. And I don't need to enter in a secondary address line because that uh, uh, that's not a required field in there, and I hit submit. So because I have all the customer information in that's required, I get a green check mark and I can hit submit. Now I want to enter in information about the about the job site or about the piece of equipment I'm working on. So this is where I'll drag the pin over to the building again, and I'm going to zoom in a bit so I can see the rooftop units on there. And I can literally drag and drop this over to the rooftop unit that I'm working on and fine tune that if I want to. So I'm marking that's the unit I'm going to work on on this roof, right? And uh, it's always handy to zoom in so you can actually see all the rooftop units. If you can't physically see it, like it's, if we're in these trees or something here and the unit's down below there, I just want to mark the general location. Again, this is so when somebody drives in and they want to see what unit you serviced, if I came here and I only serviced one unit for one company, I would actually be able to identify that unit and it makes it easier for anybody coming out in the future. Because what we're going to do is all the data about that unit is going to be stored in relationship with that pin. So when you come back out, uh, you'll be able to see exactly what units you serviced and um, and then start a new project with the data that's already been put in. So the, the system information now, in this case here, I'm going to say it's a package unit. And I'm going to put in a, a make here, ream, and I'll just put in a model number, R-A-N-L-O-3-6-J-E-Z, and serial number, test. And I can also take a photo or barcode scan. In fact, let me just, uh, I'll show you a barcode here real quick. If I tap on the barcode button, and uh, that'll pull up the barcode scanner, the very first time it's going to, um, the very first time it's gonna, uh, you pull that up, it's gonna ask for camera access. But all you have to do is move the barcode into the field and it'll automatically capture it and populate it. Now barcodes are a little bit hit and miss and you know, don't, don't get upset with barcodes because we don't know what the manufacturer puts in the barcode reading. Sometimes they put like the model and the serial combined. And sometimes it's just the model number. Sometimes it's just the serial number. Sometimes it's garbage. You know, we never know what we're going to get on there. And there could be multiple barcodes on the unit. So you might want to check different ones. But it's, even, if, even if it's model and serial combined, just go in and delete the, the leading model number, the leading serial number, um, just by going in and editing it. It's still faster than typing it in by hand, and the odds of getting an error are wrong, or are very low, right? We can also take a photo of that label. So again, if I want to take a photo of that, I just hit the photo button and move whatever I want to do to the center here, click it, and it's going to automatically store photo. I'll hit use photo, and then that photo is going to go into the project here. If I tap on that, I can pull that up and review it and look at it. So this is going to allow, if there's any corrections to be made to model serial numbers later, we have that information right at our fingertips. So I'd submit there. That, that check mark goes green. Profile, we'll say this is a three-ton unit, a 410A, 400 CFM per ton. We'll put down here it's a, it's a piston. And uh, automatically you see the superheat's auto-calculated, and the subcooling is uh, by default 10. It's actually got a wider range here. It's just the center of the range. And if we had extended performance ratings, I could add those in. Not necessary if you don't know them. And I'm going to hit submit. Electrical information, it's condensing unit. So we'll just say, in this case, I'm just going to put down uh, single phase, 230, 240, evaporator fan single phase. Uh, we'll say it's 115. And evaporator fan type, I'll just select ECM and hit submit. 
and now all the profile or all the information about that system is now stored with that pin. So I'm going to hit submit and now I'm going to go into measurements. Now this is what's really cool. If this was a, um, once, once we have this tied in with the cloud, literally all I'd have to do is come out, select the pin that I'm going to work on, select the unit I'm going to work on and go right into measurements because all the information about the project, the job site, the equipment information, it's already all entered. So I don't have to screw around with that anymore. And that's what's gonna make using MeasureQuick uh, so much faster when you do service in the future. So we can go right in the measurement screen and there's two ways we can view measurements. I can click on a view button and look at any of the subsets. So you can see that I have live data coming in. The little uh, black box next to that's an iConnect. So we know the data is coming off an iConnect. We know what kind of tool it's coming off of. And when I'm done looking at that, I just hit submit. Now I can also view it on the home screen gauges. So if I click view on home screen, this takes me into the to a, a different UI where I can go through and, and scroll through any of this data and look at um, look at you know superheat, subcooling, suction line, etc. By just scrolling through the data and taking a look at what's here. Again, very easy to do um, and uh, not hard. And we'll just scroll through all the data here. This is a uh, it's a little window a little window air conditioner is literally running on a desktop. So you know ignore all the readings. It's not running right for sure. Uh, but it, I just wanted to have some live data coming in so you could actually watch a whole test. I'm going to go back to the project here, and literally at this point, once I review everything, um, and what we do have to do is we'll just look through them real quick. So obviously here you can see I have voltage. Uh, I'll just put 240 and amperage here. Um, we'll go with, uh, uh, let's see here, uh, probably 5 amps. And uh, for the evaporator fan, I'm going to go with uh, 121 and amperage here of, uh, let's say, uh, 6 amps. Now, if you have a redfish meter, like if you've gone in your toolbox and had a redfish meter, this is going to look a little different because it's going to come up here and it's going to have the redfish meter symbol and it's going to auto-capture the data as you make the readings. It'll walk you through a little bit of a process. You don't have to type any of this stuff in. And again, we'll get uh, those um, uh, measurements printed out on our, on our job report. We know that because everything in MeasureQuick is marked with the type of tool it came off of, we know that those were not user inputs and those actually came off the tool. And we'll go ahead and hit submit here, electrical data is in. And I can look at my performance, right? If I wanna look through everything on my performance. As I'm scrolling through this here, uh, I can see that uh, everything looks obviously like it's not running real well here, but it is what it is right now. I look at my indoor measurements. Now this is where I might enter in my total external static pressure. Like let's like say I have a 510 manometer. So we'll say 0.3 and uh, 0.7. You can see it automatically calculates my total external static pressure, right? I hit submit. And then I can look at my diagnostics. So it's telling me here my airflow is high. It could be overcharged, could be restriction. And these are all probability scores. So the odds are, right, the number one problem I have here is I have high airflow. And once I get that corrected, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, uh, once I get that corrected, uh, some of these other problems may go away. So the, so the first thing it's telling me is take care of the airflow issue. Now you see that flash in between liquid line temperature below outdoor and airflow is high. And that's because this condenser is uh, got a slinger that throws water into the condenser in there. And it's actually act, acting as an evaporative cooler. So it's right on the threshold of that fault. So all these faults are, are live. I mean, it's, it's running all these calculations in the background. So as we correct things, you could see those go away. If you open up with the minor faults down below, this is all of the minor things we're seeing that are contributing to the major faults. So, you know, the superheat, the superheat's too low, the approach is too low, the, you know, all those different things, compression ratio is too low. It's just telling us what, what it's seeing faults in the system. And those minor faults are what aggregate to these uh, major potential faults. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit back here. And at this point, if I just wanna save the data, the data saved and I can just exit the project. So now when I exit the project, it takes me right back in to create a new project. So I'm assuming I'm done with the one window air conditioner, the one rooftop unit, I wanna to go to the next. But let's say I wanna share these results. So now at the bottom, there's a results tab. And you can see that um, when I hit the results, it pulls up this site. So it's, uh, you know, it's got the site name, the equipment name, and the notes that I typed in the test. And if I select that test result down below, that's gonna now allow me to review all the results of the tests so I can see in my diagnostics that I had, you know, all these thing, different things were wrong and uh, or that all these are all my different faults that when I did the testing, I can see how my system was performing, right? And these are just sort of quick access. I can view my environmental conditions. 
Now, if I want to, if I want to share that report, I just hit back here, click on test and hit share, export as PDF. And then you can see it pulls up all the test results, all the data, uh, all the calculations. Uh, everything that's calculated is shown as calculated. So that's what that little calculator right there is. Anything that came off of a uh, iConnect is shown like that. That's what, that's what that data is. And then, you know, each section, outdoor measurements, indoor measurements, information, performance calculations, everything I filled out is all tied into that report. At the top right, there's a little square box where I can email it, copy the Dropbox, add it to notebooks. Yours may look different. And, you know, a lot of people don't know, but if you just tap and hold these, you can move them around. So I typically use like a, a mail or Dropbox and I either print or copy this or save it to a file. So you can move these around to get the ones that you want up to the front, you know, right up to the front. So they're quick access for you. So if I want to email this thing. I just click email. I'll tap in here, Jim at, uh, we'll just take my Jim at Jim Bergman five email address, hit send. And that is off to the races. So that's it. If I go back into my account here, and there's my export PDF. Click on that, and there we go. So I could email this to the customer. I could email it to the office. I could save a copy of it to a Dropbox file for the office. But that is that is it. It's very very fast, very easy to use, and um, it uh, communicates really well to the customer what you've done. A couple other things in projects here. We can look at it as a list view or map view. So when I click on the map, I can see in this case here a couple of projects that I that I didn't mark the location on that are out in the parking lot. But you can see here these, these red uh, dots on the map are where I've done projects. So if I want to select that project in the future, I'd hit, just click on it, hit view, and then I hit set as active. And then I go back in the project and I can actually, uh, in this case, could clear out the measurements and, uh, and restart this thing all over again if I wanted to do that. So it, it allows you to go in and review a project or set it as an active project and go in and, and uh, redo that. And again, that's going to allow you to, to do things much faster in the future. So this uh, hopefully got you a good overview of what's going on here. One more section before we go, uh, education section. This is a really nice section of information. You can open and close these things, but this ties in, um, you know, what non-invasive system testing is, how to do it. Uh, a link to the measure quick uh, information about our news feed or or even like testing capacitors you know how hard start kits work so this you know shows you a little wiring and and uh inrush uh, current changes things like that so there's a lot of really good information training information in here and keep an eye on this section because we update it periodically as we push new content out one more section here is just your toolbox too on the other side this is where we can add in new equipment in this case here you can see i'm connected to a uh, an i manifold or i connect I wanted to activate my smart probes here. This is where I'd activate them. Or if I wanted to scan for a new tool, like add it on a Redfish meter, this is, a, this is where I would do that uh, in, the, uh, in the application. So, again, very easy to use, to be very intuitive. Once you go through this once, I think you'll really, really like it. And uh, it should be a game changer for the whole industry. So, if you've got any questions or comments on the video, please feel free to reach out to us at jim at measurequick.com or, um, you know, to call me by phone. So, this is uh, Jim Bergman with... Measure quick. Thanks a lot for watching.